and Doc Rivers is going to be their head coach. Now, in Adrian Griffin, I, I was told um, the source with the, within the Bucks group that just this guy was really, really beloved. It wasn't that they didn't like him. It was not that they he'd lost the room. It's just that there's an urgency with this group to try to win now, and there's concerns. Are we going to get close enough to do that? Can Doc come in? He's a guy who's been the voice in every room, and he's got a certain level of cachet. Can he change the issues that they uh, face on the defensive end of the floor? Yeah, I think he can. Number one, he's just going to command great respect because mm -hmm. that's what he gets around the league. And certainly the star players, Giannis and Damian Lillard, the most important of the group, they're going to respect him on a, on a different level because of what this guy's accomplished in the league. He's going to be able to help them, I think, from an X's and O's standpoint, schematically with some of the defensive things that have gone on. But I think in general, a lot of it's just going to come down to personal effort. I think that's where Doc is going to have the cachet so I think call guys out, get a little bit more out of people when you watch film um, and, and make guys accountable. I think that's what Doc Rivers brings probably more than anything else. You know, Adrian Griffin, I just think the organization probably looked at the stakes that are associated with this pairing with Giannis and Lillard and particularly always one eye on Giannis and making sure he is satisfied that he has a chance to compete at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think they felt they had enough of a veteran proven presence to navigate what was going to be a very difficult postseason at 30 and 13 certainly not fair to Adrian Griffin but this is professional sports they're not worried about fair they're worried about getting it done right now and they don't necessarily think Adrian Griffin was the right guy for that and Doc can come in and play tapes you've done sitting here with me at this year and right. just say that isn't what is this that effort on yeah. the defensive end is not good enough I had, a, I, had a, I had examples tonight we could have gone over <laughs> but it, it's it's some of its effort some of its personnel Scott we right. talked about this when you lose the point of attack pressure and physicality of Drew Holiday right. what that means to your defense behind that guy because that's the first thing you see when you're back on defense is what's happening at the point of attack. And that's a lot. Drew. Very few dudes gave yeah. as much as he gave in fighting over screens and hounding right. guys and never quitting on a play. You know, they've taken a step back in that area. Some of the other guys on their team, I think, through injuries, maybe a little bit slower. So there are some issues from a personnel standpoint there. And they're hoping that Doc Rivers can be the guy to figure out a way to tweak what they're doing and make the adjustments to protect some of these guys from their weaknesses. About that, he has cachet. He's earned it. But he's also got a record in series and in game sevens that you could look at and say, huh, that doesn't concern you, though, with this team because why? Yeah, look, it's, gonna, it's fair to bring it up. Five straight game sevens, I think ten overall he has lost. It's mm -hmm. fair to bring it up you know, and wondering how he's going to navigate those moments. But here's where I'm going to cut him a break. When I look at what happened in Philly, and these are the most recent ones, the most prominent ones, He's not going to deal in Milwaukee with what he dealt with in Philadelphia, where guys that are played in the All-Star game that year show up in a big spot and decide they're going to play completely yeah. differently. Right. It's one thing to have a bad night. That's not even what I'm talking about. Right. When your team is used to star players playing a certain way with a certain level of aggressiveness, mm -hmm. and that disappears, and that, I think, also affected the body language of Joel Embiid, when he would see that, it kind of, I think he kind of felt like, well, I guess I'm out here by myself tonight. Uh, Doc's not going to deal with that with these two guys. They embrace the moment. They're going to run to the light and the big stage. Damian Lillard, Giannis, even Middleton. So that's one thing. And the last time Doc had something like that where guys embraced the moment Boston. was Boston, yeah. 2008, at that level, and he won a championship. So I'm going to give Doc the benefit of the doubt. He's not going to have to push as many buttons on a given night when you have those two players. The offense is going to run itself when you've got guys that good. I think in Philly sometimes he was kind of wondering, how am I supposed to work around this when my all-star starting point guard is having one of these nights where he's in a very dark place and I can't get any aggressiveness out of him? He's not going to deal with that with this group. Well, we'll miss him on the mic for us, but I think we all understand. If you can walk across sit, from sitting next to Mike and Doris and go sit next to Giannis, that's a walk across the court you got to <laughs> no, make. No, it's not a tough sell.